Today we're going to be talking all about how to take photos of your Amigurumi toys and not just that, we're going to actually talk about how to find your own style when it comes to taking photos of your finished objects. And while it was really fun taking photos with this little Polaroid camera, I'm actually going to be showing you exactly how I do it with a regular cell phone. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm Elise from the blog LePetitSaintCrochet.com. We put so much into our Amigurumi toys. We spend hours crocheting or knitting them and we want them to look the best whether you are just sharing them on your Facebook page, your Instagram account, or maybe you're actually even selling them on Etsy and you want those photos to look really, really good. But I've also got some great advice from some really amazing Amigurumi designers out there and they're going to be sharing some of those with us as well. And while I'll be giving you actionable steps for taking photos of your amigurumi, I'm also going to help you find what is your own style. I've identified two different styles of amigurumi photography, and I'm going to help you figure out which one really resonates with you, which one do you really like, so that you can start to take photos that you love and that really showcase the hard work that you've put into your toy making. So let's go ahead and get started right away, and I'm going to show you exactly how I take photos of amigurumi toys. This is my favorite place to actually take photos of my Amigurumi projects, which is in my kitchen. I have a nice big window over here, and I don't really have a lot of direct light coming in, which is really good. It's really bright, diffused light that is perfect for taking photos of Amigurumi. And the first thing to notice is that I have all of my lights off in the entire house. There is not one artificial light on because it really creates an ugly yellowish tone, and I only want natural light. So this is what I'm doing when I am inside the house. And this is how I start to set up my shot. I've got little James Duck here and I've got my pretty flowers and I think that this looks really nice but I'm gonna play around with finding a few other things to see what's gonna look the best with little James Duck here. So one of my favorite things to do is to add fresh flowers. I always think that they look so beautiful when it comes to taking photos of Amigurumi. And now I'm gonna put little James here but now I'm gonna go ahead and get my phone out and just see how this is gonna look when I get my camera out. I don't have great light in here right now because it's really cloudy outside, but that's okay because I can edit this and it's going to look great. So this is looking pretty good, but I actually want a few other things, but I'm looking at everything in the frame of my shot and I'm liking what I'm seeing. I could even back up a little bit to get more of the beautiful flowers. And of course, I always like to take my photos in portrait mode because it gives that beautiful blurred background. I'm going to add a few things and see what looks great as I am styling this and seeing what makes it look really good because I like a little bit more clutter in my photos. I'm also gonna add one more thing because I like to have a little bit of height over here on this side of the photo. And I always take multiple photos. I never take just one because there's always something that can be tweaked and you always want to look through multiple shots to see which one really is the best. I actually really like having this, how this looks right here with the little bird cage. It really gives it some height over here to kind of balance what's going on. I'm gonna go ahead and take a few shots here. I also like to off-center the toy just a little bit. Sometimes I like them right in the center, but for this one, I'm liking just a little off-center. And this just looks really pretty. I actually really am happy with how this is looking. I went ahead and chose photos that I like, but I'm going to go ahead and go to my free Lightroom app. This is a wonderful app. This is the one that I love. There's my picture of Olive I just did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going here to this little plus sign down here, and I'm getting it from my camera roll. This is the first one that that we took in the living room and you can see that it looks pretty dark here. You have an auto function here at the bottom but I actually don't really like using that. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the light and obviously this needs a higher exposure because it's pretty dark. So I just start bringing up the light. So I'm liking around here. So just start playing around with the light and the dark, but right around here is I'm liking how that looks. I also like to add a little bit of contrast, but for the highlights, especially when I have whites in here, I want to take down my highlights just a little bit because you're going to get more definition. The lighter your photo is, you will have more definition if you take those highlights down. I'm going to play around with shadows and see if that makes any difference. Oh yeah. 
yeah, I like having that just come down. You can kind of see that it's starting to lighten up this area just a little bit. I like how that looks. I'm not going to mess with the whites or the blacks. Now I'm going to scoot over and I have my color here. I'm gonna add just a smidge on the temperature, just a tiny little bit. I'm at a plus three right there. Tint, I'm gonna bring it up just a tiny little bit and my vibrance, just a little, little tiny bit because I really want those colors to pop out. Now, for the saturation, I can bring that up or I could actually bring it down if I wanted to make it a little more monochromatic. I love that look too. But for this, I actually think I'm just gonna leave the saturation where it is. Now I'm gonna slide over to effects. So I'm going to add a little bit of the texture because I love seeing the details in my stitches. So I only did a plus seven there. The clarity, I usually just do like a plus three, somewhere really low. I don't wanna add a whole lot, but you can play with it and see what these do. So that makes it really soft. And here it's just sharpening it just a little bit. And then we have the dehaze here, which I add just a little bit as well. And then with the vignette, you can actually go to the left and you're making it dark around the edges or you can actually go here and make it light around the edges. So I'm gonna play around with this and see which one I like because sometimes it's really fun to add a little vignette. It actually makes the focus of your photo stand out when you kind of make the edges either darker or lighter. I'm not gonna mess with the midpoint or any of these other things. I just like how that looks. And then I'm going to go over to the detail and just do a little bit of sharpening. So now I can click on the photo. You can hold it down and look at what it looked like before and after. Before, after. This is an amazing app. Right up here is the little arrow and I'm going to export it to my camera roll. So now it is saved to my camera roll. Finding your own style when taking photos of your amigurumi is really important. It also is expressing who you are as a maker. I've identified two different styles and one of them is clean and the other one is eclectic. I wanna talk about the clean style first. Now, I do not fall into this category, but there are a lot of amazing makers that do. The first one that we're gonna talk about is Arena from Little Aqua Girl. She has absolutely beautiful photos and they're a very clean clean style. Let's look at her little duck photo. First of all, how adorable is that? But that's the only thing in the actual picture. There is nothing else. There are no props. It's not outside. She has just set up a little space and she is taking a photo just of the duck and it couldn't be more gorgeous. I love this photo. I think it's so beautiful. I also love her swan with the beautiful flower crown and it has the same background. Also, her little tiny mouse is so precious and I love that they are very simple and clean, but you'll notice that she's got the little backdrop and it's not white, so there is a little bit of color and interest there. As you look at some of her other photos, you'll see that she does have some background things here and there, but for the most part, she's keeping it super clean and you will also notice that her colors are all very consistent. This lets the toy speak for itself and I just think it is so beautiful. Let's look at Andrea from Lemon Yarn Creations. She has a beautiful, clean photography, and I just love it so much. Andrea actually has her very own photography tips, and I reached out to her, and she was like, sure, just use them on your blog and the YouTube channel as well. So I really want to thank Andrea for letting us look at her actual tips for taking photos. She is a master of her photography of her Amigurumi toys. I just love them. Look at that cute little lemon in the bathtub. That is so adorable. Now, she's using more props, but it's all very, very clean. So let's go ahead and look at her specific photography tips for clean style amigurumi photography. I think that those were all really great tips. We're gonna go ahead and move on to our next clean style photography, which is from Foxy Crochet. This is another way of keeping everything very clean where the focus of the entire photo is just your toy. I love the little strawberry girl and the little bunny rabbits, and there is a little bit of the flowers, and then she's got the little windmill. I think that it's all really beautiful, but it's clean, and you know exactly what this photo is about. Our final clean style photography is 
is from Jennifer from Super Cute Design. She has adorable photography and her photos are really clean, but it lets the Amigurumi toys really speak for themselves. But she also has those backgrounds where she's either using poster board or something to create just the color. And so with the little pineapple, you see that there's just one color, but with the little ice cream cones, she has two colors. And I love how she's splitting that on a diagonal and that just gives that photo a little more interest. So the next style is eclectic. I'm going to show you some of my favorite Amigurumi photographers that have this style and show you some of their work. The first example is Diana Patscoon and I love her photography. It is so rich and so detailed. There's so much going on in most of her photos. They are absolutely gorgeous. I love that she actually has a work in progress with the bee and then you see the yarn and you've got the knitting needles there but she has that beautiful book opened up and you can tell that it's on an old rustic table and that's what I feel like eclectic style really does is it tells a story through the props and the amigurumi toys. If you look at her beautiful teddy bear and you see the little boxes in the background in the basket you also can see her other photo with the doll and the teddy bear and the cup of tea. It's just beautiful. Another one of my favorites is Tessile. I think I'm saying that right. She is wonderful and you'll find her on Instagram. Tessile is such a beautiful example of that eclectic style. She tells stories with her photos. When you look at the one of her knitted Anne of Green Gables doll, how beautiful is that? And actually Anne is in focus, but you can see that there's actually some greenery. It looks like Ivy is in front of Anne. You can really see the depth and you can see that Anne is kind of hiding behind the beautiful flowers and the greenery. I just think that that is such a beautiful photo. You can use your imagination so much with these photos. Now the next one is Sarah D. Crochet and Sarah is amazing. I love all of her work. She's a fantastic designer and she also has some really great tips that she actually shared with me and she wanted to share it with you guys as well. Her photos are so beautiful and they're saturated with color and there's always a lot going on and I love her photography style. So Sarah's biggest recommendation is the indirect natural light. This doesn't mean just go outside and place your items in the sun. Nope. This means using natural light to enhance what you're photographing. There are two times of the day that are the best for this, dusk and dawn. I call these the sweet sun hours. Setting up your props outside during these hours means there is minimal editing with maximum results. Using nature as your background can really make your items pop. The other tip that Sarah has is all about taking photos in the correct angles. And I think that this is one of the best tips I've seen. She said, make sure to line up the photo with the eyes of the amigurumi. I take a lot of my photos on the ground. Don't be afraid to get on the ground, lay on your belly and get that proper photo angle. There can be a huge difference in just a 10 degree shift. Her next tip is about using the portrait mode in your camera, which is what we did in the little tutorial part. Use the portrait button to pull focus and blur your background. Most phones or cameras have portrait options. And last but not least, she talks about editing. I found that I use the options for brightness, warmth, and sharpness the most. Thank you, Sarah, so much for all of those tips. I think that they're fantastic and you can see just from her photos that she really does practice what she preaches. Her photos and designs are amazing, so make sure to check those out. Last but not least in the eclectic style is forest wool. I think that these are some of the most beautiful photos. If you look at the one with the bunny with the little hood, you can see that that actually looks like brown paper and it's crinkly and she's got some baby's breath. I think it's really beautiful and she's also using the color to keep it very monochromatic. I think that's beautiful. I also love her bunnies that are in the little wire basket. I think that's really pretty and she's using the texture of the blanket or the carpet there and then she has the texture of the little basket and you can just kind of see that she's got a color scheme going on there that I think is really beautiful and finally she's got her little cat there in the background and what I love is that she has something in the foreground of the photo but the focus of the photo is the cat so you might want to play around with that a little bit having something that's in the foreground that is out of focus because the focus is actually on the cat it's also monochromatic I really hope that you enjoyed this video today all about how to photograph Ami Rumi, talking about the different techniques, but also finding your own style. But also make sure to check out all the links in the description box below. You'll find all the accounts that I talked about. Everything's going to be there. But thank you for spending a little bit of time with me today. I hope that you are enjoying taking some photos of your Amigurumi makes, and I hope you all are staying safe out there and happy stitching.